The focus of this video is a condition called gastrinoma, also called the zollinger allison syndrome. The end result is excess production of acid that leads to symptoms and complications. This is due to the unbridled production of a hormone called gastrin. In this video, we will find out what it is, what are the symptoms, what are the associated conditions, its diagnosis and treatment. Gastrin is a... In this cartoon, we can see the gullet, the stomach, Continuing with the small bowel, the liver produces bile which comes down the bile tube and helps in digestion of the fat. Pancreas produces enzymes and neutralizes the stomach acid. It is this part of the stomach that has the acid producing cells within it and the antrum or the lower half of the stomach produces a hormone called gastrin. Gastrin has the capacity of causing excess acid when the conditions are right. However, if there is a tumor that produces excess gastrin, that causes another chemical to be released called histamine, and then histamine acts on the parietal cells causing excess acid. Hence, it is this unbridled production of gastrin, the hormone which causes all of the effects of a gastrinoma or the zollinger ellison syndrome. 60 to 90 percent of gastrinomas are malignant, and the disappointing thing is that the mean time to diagnosis for a patient is five to six years. Hence, patient may have long-term symptoms which are easy to confuse with peptic ulcer disease. So the symptoms in the stomach typically are peptic ulcer disease. This is a condition where the lining of the stomach sloughs off, leaving an ulcer behind, typically causing pain, nausea, and other symptoms. These ulcers are prone to complications such as bleeding, fistula formation, or perforation. And because there is a lot of acid in the stomach, it can also cause reflux-like symptoms. The problem is that such a huge amount of acid enters the small bowel, the pancreatic secretions, the bile and the small bowel secretions are unable to cope with this, leading to damage of the lining of the small bowel. This leads to problems with absorption and ultimately malabsorptive diarrhea called statoria. Excess gastrin also causes problems with absorption of water and salt from the small bowel, thus contributing to the diarrhea. It is very important to remember that between 1-10% to 10 of the symptoms may be due to a second hormone as part of the multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome. Let's talk about that. The multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 1 is a rare condition that has a genetic predisposition that leads to multiple tumors thus producing active hormones from the pancreas, the parathyroid and the pituitary. The gastrinoma is classed as a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. It is very important for patients suspected of or diagnosed with gastrinoma to have screening for MEN1 because it has genetic implications as well as other hormone producing hormones that may need treatment in their own right. The diagnosis of gastrinoma is not straightforward. This is because there are many conditions in which the gastrin levels are elevated and the symptoms are quite similar. The first thing to focus on is the symptoms as peptic ulcer disease that tends to recur and is resistant to treatment. Then we have to prove the high levels of gastrin secondary to a tumor. For this we would need fasting levels of gastrin after removing the effect of anti-ulcer drugs that can also cause an elevation of the levels and these levels typically should be 10 times or more higher than the norm. At the same time the acid in the stomach should be high which translates to a low pH. Sometimes a test called a secretin test is also deployed. Secretin is a hormone when injected it will cause the tumors to release gastrin thus resulting in high levels. Finally all patients with neuroendocrine tumors ought to be tested for chromogranin A which typically is elevated in patients with natto neuroendocrine tumors. It is very important that patients are screened for multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. Once the biochemical assessment is complete then the more difficult process of locating the tumor starts because these can be quite small and cause significant symptoms sometimes no bigger than one centimeter or smaller and they can be multiple. Endoscopy ought to be performed which typically shows an ulcer or a healing ulcer. Ulcers can be multiple. With an endoscopy a flexible tube with a camera at the end enters the gullet, inspects the stomach and then into the small bowel all the way across to the third part of the duodenum. This can also be supplemented with endoscopic ultrasound which has a similar principle but there is an ultrasound scanner attached at the tip that causes highly sensitive pictures to be taken. It is important to remember 
It is important to remember that 80 to 90 percent of gastrinomas occur in from the second part of the duodenum to the third part of the duodenum and the head and neck of the pancreas which roughly translates to around this area. A CT and MRI scan can be quite helpful as they produce detailed pictures. Patients with suspected neuroendocrine tumor often undergo the 68 gallium dotatate scan. Molecules labeled with radioactivity are injected into the patient which are taken up by the tumors which then emit radioactivity picked up by the appropriate devices and those pictures are superimposed on a CT scan to assist the location of the tumor. In very small tumors this activity may be very difficult to detect to be able to make a definite diagnosis. Finally when there is biochemical and symptomatic evidence of gastrinomas and all other modalities fail to produce the location of the tumor patients may be subjected to surgery to try and locate the tumor with direct inspection, palpation and use of ultrasonography. In terms of treatment anyone suspected of a gastrinoma ought to have his treatment or her treatment carried out in a specialist center that has the facilities and the experience to deal with these complex neuroendocrine tumors. I cannot stress this point hard enough. Most of these patients would have had treatment with anti-ulcer medication and this medication would have failed the great majority of the patients with the ulcers recurring. However, the proton pump inhibitors and other medication can reduce the acid secretion and thus control the symptoms for those who are not suitable for other treatments. The definitive treatment for gastrinoma is surgical removal of the tumors. The kind of surgery involved would depend on the location, whether it's in the duodenum, or whether it's in the pancreas or rarely in other parts. As mentioned previously, localizing the tumor sometimes can be very problematic. A proportion of these tumors may have metastasized to other parts and surgery would need to include removal of the metastases as well as the primary for control of symptoms. The majority of these types of tumors are well differentiated grade one neuroendocrine tumors with excellent prognosis with a five-year survival of between 90 to 95 percent. It is the control of symptoms that the patient most crave and it's only surgery that can provide that in a long-term manner. This concludes a brief overview of this complex disorder. If you have any comments please do share.